By this time, you are aware of a couple of ways to control the pitch on the bassoon. Remember the articulation experiments in lesson three, BDP number 33? In those experiments, we charted the pitch response of more and less air and changes in the embouchure. If you need to review this, here are the links for English and Chinese versions. In this lesson, I will introduce a third pitch control component, changes in vowels. This is also called voicing. The best way to illustrate this is for me to pick a rather unstable note on the bassoon, B flat three. Let me change the vowel in my mouth from E to AW. E is in teeth and AW is in awful. <laughs> When I play the note, I don't speak the vowel. Rather, I just move my tongue. I'll try to do this without moving my jaw. Did you hear the difference in pitch? Well, obviously. The E vowel has a higher pitch than the A vowel. Now, the A and the E vowels represent the extremes, the outer edges of that uh, vowel spectrum or voicing spectrum. There's other vowels in between the two. Uh, I think the one that sort of best describes the middle ground is oo, as in tooth, or the German umlaut. Uh, it's something in between the two. Uh, let's just practice that. So put your teeth together and let's just practice going from aw to oo, to e, and back and forth. It's hard not to move your lips there, isn't it? But yeah, if you can not move your, your embouchure, your lips here, and transition through those vowels, you get a real idea of uh, the different tongue positions that are possible. Now, the bassoon has registers that move from the darkest vowels, I'll call ah the darkest vowel, through to the brightest vowel, e. The lowest note you've learned so far is f2, and uh, f2 definitely needs that ah, that darker vowel. It, it keeps down the pitch, opens up the resonance. And as we move through that first register of the bassoon, up to E3, uh, we tend to move through into brighter vowels. Now, as I think about it, I'm not really quite to an E yet when I get to the E3. Maybe it's more of the U, the transitional middle vowel. But when I get to F, F3, that tends to be a sharper note on my instrument. So I have to, again, drop back to a darker vowel, more of an A vowel. And certainly the F sharp three and the G three need to have that darker vowel that really drops the pitch. Those are very sharp notes on our instrument. Then very quickly for this new register, this sort of second register on the bassoon, I move up through the U vowel, probably that's on uh, A and by B flat and certainly C4, C4 is flat for me, I'm using the E vowel. So there's this transition. There, there is a movement through the notes you've known so far from that F2 up to E3, starting again on um, F3 and moving on up. We start the next register again from sort of an A, moving up to U through U to E. Let me play an F major scale one and a half octaves to illustrate those changes.
part of your development as a bassoonist will be to use your ear to tune each note, get a great sound, and get the maximum resonance on the notes. Listening to how embouchure, vowel, and air changes each note will help you do this. Now this is gonna take you many years to develop that full sound and to have a great sound at all the dynamics. But keep in mind that the vowel changes, the voicing, can be a significant tool to use for tuning and also for color changes.